greetings all now that Bruce is back as Batman I wanted to do a video basically talking about both Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson um, and what I think about them as in their roles as respective um, Cape Crusaders as you see in the title I basically have um, who's your Batman now I've made it no secret I've made it no secret in the past that my preference would have been for Dick Grayson to remain Batman um, since he's not I'm not exactly hating the fact that Bruce Wayne has returned to the cowl um, but here's my perspective on both characters or both um, um, civilians if you will that have portrayed the Dark Knight starting with Dick Grayson uh, I'll say he's my favorite because Grant Morrison wrote him Grant Morrison had written him in such a way that he humanized Batman that um, you kind of felt like you could feel for the character you could feel some empathy for the character he was what you would call um, in the comic circles as being relatable and um, having Frank quietly do the first few issues of Batman and Robin you know pretty much was a master stroke I felt that Frank quietly more than any artist that's been on Batman and Robin um, was able to communicate through body gesture that there was somebody else underneath the cowl even if you didn't know Dick Grayson was Batman more than likely you would have picked up on the fact that Bruce Wayne wasn't Batman so um, the work done by Grant Morrison and, and, and um, Frank Quietly I thought was just exemplary now while I while in my opinion I feel that Dick Grayson is my favorite Batman I will say um, counter to that that Bruce Wayne is the best Batman and I say that in large part I guess you could say for similar reasons that people have issues with Bruce Wayne as Batman foregoing the whole Dick Grayson thing um, Bruce is far less relatable. He's um, someone that you can't really empathize with a lot, especially the way he's been written for the past, I don't know, 12 to 15 years. Um, his DNA would show him to be obviously human, but um, his demeanor at times, at many times, um, might have you question his humanity. For most people that's a problem. For me it isn't. Um, the fact that Bruce compared to most of the heroes of the DCU 
is kind of cold, maybe a bit calculating, I think works to his benefit. Um, I think the best way I can describe it probably would be to say if you compare him to his polar opposite which is Superman Superman does whatever he can Batman by comparison does whatever he has to quite often that's not going to be something that's going to make you popular it might make you right but it won't make you popular it won't win friends over it won't win fans over but I think in a matter of speaking it's kind of a necessary evil um, I think Grant Morrison's story um, Tower of Babel which ran inside um, Justice League really encapsulates what I think most people have a problem with with Batman the Bruce Wayne one anyway um, long story short relatively speaking uh, for those who never checked out Tower of Babel basically Rash al Ghul was able to breach um, Batman's um, intel or Bruce Wayne's intel and was able to use the Justice League's powers against them or was able to um, um, capitalize on their weaknesses however you want to put it um, only to find out only for the Justice League to find out later that Rash al Ghul could only do what he did because of Bruce so they essentially once the threat was taken care of they essentially decided to vote whether or not to keep whether or not to keep Batman in or to let him go from the Justice League now as those characters were written I think some fans felt similar similarly um, you know, why would you um, um, collect information on your teammates, um, on your colleagues, on your friends, um, not let them know, and, uh, um, you know, forgetting the whole thing that it could fall to the wrong hands, just morally speaking, why would, you know, why would you not, um, you know, just go to your friends and let them know, you know, what the deal is in case you as a superhero went rogue or someone hypnotized you or um, you had a, psych a psychotic break or what have you. And um, some, of the some of the Justice Leaguers kind of felt that uh, uh, had he had just come forth and been honest with them, um, that most of them would have complied and would have um, told them their secrets anyway which I believe had that been you know the Dick Grayson Batman um, um, that's probably how he would have handled it and he would have been wrong it's because of Bruce's um, skepticism because of his cynicism um, that he had to do what he did the way he did it. Uh, for Batman's character, especially the way he's been written for the past decade plus, it would have been foolish of him to think that um, um, that the Justice League would have been completely forthcoming um, with you know their weaknesses and whatnot even if you're looking at it from the different leaguers perspectives and you draw the conclusion that each and every one of them would have complied he can't afford to think that so uh, um, if Superman goes rogue and there's no other supers around 
you know, he has to know how to take him down. If uh, if um, if Wonder Woman is possessed and um, she wreaks havoc, same scenario. No other supers are around. He has to know how to take her down. Um, Martian Manhunter, you know, whomever the individual is. Um, so for those who consider Batman to be sort of a an ass, um, folks have used other anatomical descriptions to um, to um, define them. But I'll just go ahead and use ass. That's fairly PC. Um, I say, you know, fine. He's an ass. Or whatever pejorative you would like to use. Uh, but he's not a Boy Scout. He's not Superman. And he shouldn't be. Uh, uh, I think, all things considered, Batman is somebody, um, chances are, you would feel safer with than probably anyone else who has powers. You know, that's just my, you know, just my view. Um, now, what was the other thing I was going to mention? Um, well, I'm kind of lost in thought, so I think I'll go ahead and cut this off and, um, oh, wait a minute. No, um, the other thing is people were talking about um, how unbelievable he is in certain situations and that that's another reason that you can't relate to him. You know, you basically have a character that a sniper could take out on any given day. Yet, that same character um, can stare down Darkseid and not bat an eyelash. Now, I know some folks have a problem with that. And I get it. You know, he's a mortal man um, that can be taken down by mortal means. How is he facing these cosmic beings? Now, one way that I look at it is you have arguably comics most iconic character I know there's others in the running but again arguably it's all subjective but arguably you have the most iconic character in comics who has stood the test of time um, why would he not be larger than life? You know, I never got into comics because of how real they came across, despite the whole Marvel, where um, um, the world outside your window jazz. Um, for me, comics is purely an escapist medium. If I wanted um, abject realism, you know, I'd be just checking out documentaries all day. But, you know, to each their own. Um, conversely, you look, you know, speaking of Marvel, um, folks seem to have a problem where Batman can stare down someone like Darkseid or Darkseid, however y'all pronounce it, or um, um, Mongol or the Armored Luther or, um, or um, you know, any number of of um, supernatural or cosmic threat yet um, folks don't seem to have that same criticism of Captain America now don't get me wrong Captain America is my second favorite superhero but still um, there's a certain dichotomy there's a certain double standard I think where you can have an issue with um, Batman uh, you know facing off against someone like Amazo but Captain America standing face to face with Thanos there's no issue 
maybe somebody somewhere has one, but I haven't come across it on YouTube yet. But I constantly hear it about Batman. So, you know, uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Um, There's certain conventions that I like to, um, um, or I don't know if conventions, the t- conventions are the term, maybe um, not rule either, but certain, I guess, certain general um, platforms that I like to see uh, characters, you know, be maintained in which you don't have this um, um, unbelievability deal. But at the same time, you know, uh, uh, not to use the old adage, they're just comics as a defense. But um, um, in the world of comics, especially with superheroes and supervillains, um, the imagination is wide open. And uh, um, the fact that Batman could take down Darkseid... Um, seemingly at his own peril although you come to find out later that he didn't die um, um, to me that's just something that's just um, you know extra um, bang for the buck because everybody knows realistically Batman couldn't do half the things he does outside of his own Gotham circle anyway and maybe not a, not a lot of stuff within there, um, if it were actually real life. But you know, it's not. So um, I really don't take much umbrage with it. Well, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and um, take my leave now. And anybody that cares to comment, um, um, pro or con, I'm um, I'm all ears. Till next time, night out.